In this video, I'm going to be talking about permanent dipole-dipole forces. And this is similar to Van der Waals forces, except this is caused by um, the dipoles which exist in polar molecules. And polar molecules are molecules which are all, all at all at practically all times in these molecules there's a dipole. So, and this and that's caused by the difference in electronegativity between the the atoms, the bonding atoms in the molecule. So, if you imagine maybe if um, chlorine was bonded to something really uh, l much less electronegative like hydrogen, it would probably form a polar bond, and um, that polar bond would kind of because of that polar bond there'd be a dipole there in that molecule permanently and this per let me go down actually to a uh, HCl molecule which I've got here so if we draw on the dipoles so this chlorine since chlorine if we as I showed you on the periodic table chlorine is near the top uh, right of the periodic table so it's going to be quite electronegative so I'm going to draw a delta minus on the chlorine or close to the chlorine and on the hydrogen I'm going to draw a delta plus since hydrogen is going to be permanently slightly positive because if I was to draw the electrons on here and I'll draw that in in light well I draw that in yellow actually if I was to draw the electrons they'd be much closer to the chlorine and this would cause these permanent dipoles to arise now if 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 we had more than one of these HCl molecules so the hydrogen chlorine molecules was it hydrogen chloride probably hydrogen chloride let me just copy this molecule if we had two of these molecules so that would be let me see control c control v control v yeah there we go so if i had another one of these molecules here right as you can see, this is slightly negative and this is slightly positive. So there's going to be an attractive force between this slightly negative chlorine and a slightly positive hydrogen. And we call that an electrostatic attractive force. So, and I'll just draw this as like dots. So let me choose, I'll do it in purple. So you can imagine it's going to be some sort of electrostatic force between the chlorine and the hydrogen. And so those two are going to be attracted to each other. And so, because these are permanent dipoles, this these forces can pretty much always happen because these dipoles are always, always there, since since these molecules are polar, we call them the we call them permanent dipole dipole forces. And some some interesting properties arise because of these this permanent dipole. If we were to have maybe um, uh, a liquid right, which is polar. And we, 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 we took a, a electrostatically charged rod, whether it's positive or negative, it doesn't really matter. But if we were to take one of these rods, this rod can actually influence the, um, the movement of the water molecules or, well, I say water molecules, it, the, whatever the polar, polar liquid is, the, the molecules in that polar liquid, um, would be influenced. The reason why I said water molecules is because there's a really like, um, quite common example of this if 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 you've ever maybe uh taken a tap so let me draw a little tap head here there we go and this is like it fades into the darkness maybe it's really secretly an elephant's trunk but we won't find out so i'll draw some um discolored water here um Try to ignore the color of the water, please. So if we have um, the water coming out here, which is quite um, darky blue, if we were to now take, as you can see, this water right now is just being influenced by gravity. It's just going straight down, basically, towards the um, towards the ground, right? If we were to take an electrostatically charged rod and place it maybe here, so what I mean is we've basically rubbed this rod so that uh around maybe the outside of this rod we have negative charge or positive charge but let's just pretend that the charge on this rod this particular rod is negative so we have uh minus 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 all along the surface of this rod and so what's actually going to happen is let me actually take this rod down slightly 
So yeah, I think that's going to take a bit of the pen. I mean, a bit of the tap, but don't worry about that. Yeah, so if we took it there, what would actually happen is that this this um, rod would be influenced by by the... I mean, the, the water would be influenced by the rod. And so as the water travels... As the water travels down, when it gets near the rod, it's going to be... Uh, um, as you can see, the path of this water has actually changed because the, the 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 molecules, the polar molecules in this in this um, water are attracted towards the negative charge here. And so, if we were to look on a really small scale, what is actually happening? Let me draw this to the side somewhere so I can I can show you guys that. So if we were to look at this this thing, this stream of water molecules, and actually look at what's happening when this when this rod is here, what's actually happening is the negative charge of the rod is causing the polar molecules in liquid. As you know, liquids are quite um, it contains molecules which are quite free to move around, maybe change their um, plane, move around like face up, face down. The molecules can basically change direction. And what happens is these molecules actually move around so that if we were to consider the H2O molecules, for example, the oxygen in it is sli slightly negatively charged. So what would happen is the oxygens would start to point away from this because it's negative, whereas the hydrogens would be pointing towards it and would be attracted to it. So if I was to draw one, one water molecule here, and we have the oxygen, which is slightly negative, and the hydrogens... So we've got the hydrogen here and the hydrogen here. This is meant to be a water molecule. And this is slightly positive. What's going to happen is this molecule is going to be the, the, the positive part actually changes and it's flip. As you can see, it's, it's facing the negative um, rod and this would cause the attraction. So as it gets to this point, it would be more influenced to try and try and stay close to this rod because of that electrostatic attraction. And so, yeah, this is basically the whole idea behind um permanent dipole dipole forces and um at as level we usually consider permanent dipole dipole forces to be um for the most part stronger than van der waals forces and 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 in the next video i'm going to be actually taking a look at hydrogen bonding and hydrogen bonding is actually a special type of permanent dipole dipole forces it's 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 stronger and it happens it involves hydrogen but i'll go into that in that video so i hope you guys found this video helpful and i'll see you in the next video